Hey, welcome back, Telflator folks. Jeff and the OG out here with you, and we have something a little special to show you today. What might this be, you say? Jeff and I are on the Katy Perry Memorial Rifle Range today, and we are actually going to shoot, not shoot at, a breast implant. Jeff brought me this breast implant. God only knows where he got this thing. Uh, a guy from Patreon named Free sent it to me. And he just sends you breasts in the, in the mail? Yeah. That sounds like a Japanese thing. <laughs> so we have this breast implant. Seems to be like about a C, I think, if you started with nothing there. And uh, we're going to try, we're not going to shoot at the breast implant. That would obviously blow the thing up. But we are going to place this up against our shoulder and set a different uh, series of rifles against it to see what kind of uh, effect different recoils have against it. Uh, Jeff proposed this to Danny. Danny backed out. Come on, Danny. <laughs> Danny he did not want to do it. He was real, he was like, nope, that's a, that's a good one for Greg. Come on, Danny. I will gladly take on the challenge for, it's for our science. female viewers. It's, for, it's science. for science. It's for science. It's the effect of recoil on breast implants. What if our female viewers or any female is at the range and they're shooting and the buttstock comes off the shoulder a little bit more center line? You got to know where these things go. So we're going to set a rifle. We have, uh, if Jeff wants to pan to the table, we have an SKS. We have an AR-15, we have a 308 semi-automatic rifle, and then we've got the old Talflater shotgun. And we will be <laughs> we'll be trying all those different uh, different rifles up against us to see what the recoil does to them. So yeah. yeah, is it safe to shoot a gun if you have breast implants? Really, that's the the science behind I've this. I've always wondered that myself. Just driving over here today, I was wondering <laughs> I, if I, I had breast implants. I can't sleep. Not knowing, you know, that kind of stuff. I can, you know? I can sleep very comfortably right here. <laughs> anyway, folks, we have one, one breast implant. So hopefully this is not going to rupture. I am not going to opt for Jeff. Jeff offered to cover me in a tarp, but uh, I'm just going to press this right up against my jacket so that you can see it better against the black jacket. I don't know if that um, washes out or not. Eh, we're going to find out. Yeah, if I go home and Mrs. OG says, what's all over your jacket? And I'm going to say, breast implant. <laughs> How do you think that's going to go over? That's not going to go very well. Well, she'll have video uh, evidence here that it was for science. Okay. Anyway, enough fondling this thing. Let's get around to shooting with it up against my shoulder. All right? Yes, sir. I've got a breast implant firmly planted up against my shoulder. Not the first time. And I've got an AR-15 with a uh, solid buttstock here, A1 buttstock. So AR-15, especially this 20-inch rifle, does not recoil a whole lot. So we're not expecting any rupture on this one. So we'll try at least at least no rupture from this thing. All right, when you're ready. Yeah, I got the high-speed camera rolling. This Whenever is you're for ready. Science, we're, folks. And we're shooting Let's safely do. into a berm. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Anything? I don't know. Didn't rupture. AK-47. Ready? Okay, does it look like it's set? We want it to be a real fair test. It looks centered. Okay, centered everything looks good. My breast. Okay. It, another gun that doesn't have a lot of recoil. More than the AR-15. Ready? Okay. Still there. Nice. This is a 308 shot from a Smith & Wesson M&P 10. AR-10 in other words? AR-10. Often called. All right, Does it look like it's go. perfectly centered? Perfectly centered. Okay. We have some 12 gauge number seven and a half bird shot. Okay, I'm ready. You don't see Paul Harrell doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> it, it, it involve uh, oranges and in a fleece blanket, probably though.
All right, so now we have a standard old Winchester double X, double lot buck, two and three quarter inch uh, buckshot round. How, how's it doing so far as far as taming the recoil? It's actually taming it perfectly. <laughs> uh, like, a, like a lion master, lion trainer. Um, this is actually working out pretty dang good as a uh, as a recoil pad. So yeah, come on, Danny, get with the program. <laughs> All right, double lot book. When you are ready, I am ready. Woo! That one had a decent amount of recoil. Yeah, I did. What's next? All right, we have a, uh, a pretty common one ounce slug here. This is your standard old Walmart 12 gauge lead slug. Is it, what, do you have any idea what the velocity of that is or anything? Pretty, like seven or eight. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> um, no, I don't, it's, I don't know. We don't know the specs of that. Is that, what, Let's go with that. what brand is um, it, a uh, Winchester? Heavy. Okay. One ounce. <laughs> it's lead, it's, it's heavy. Lead. Uh, pretty well known though for some decent recoil. I think it. I think that one's like fifteen, over fifteen hundred feet. Per, it's a. It's a good stout load though. Speaking okay. of a good stout, we need to uh, head off after this and take a sip. <laughs> All right, okay, when you're ready enough. for the one ounce slug. Okay, I'm ready. That's funny because no recoil in my shoulder whatsoever. It's all hitting right here in my hand. Wow. So what's the what about the working? What about the pad? Is that so far, not leaking. Good. This is the last one. This is the most recoil uh, that we could think of. Yeah, or so had. this is, um, what, about an ounce and a half. This is called the heavy hitter. It's uh, six, what, 600 grains? It's something like that, 620 grains or something like that. It smells like 600 grains. <laughs> and so uh, supposedly this will have the most recoil. Let's see what it does. Yeah, I'm ready. Heavy hitter. Definitely more recoil, but nothing back here. Wow. Comfortable to shoot is on your shoulder? Very comfortable. Hey, this, Crazy. this may be the new type of recoil pad if, you can, if your friends don't make fun of you. Okay, what are your final thoughts? Welcome back to OG's Fireside Chat. So my final thoughts are, OG likes breast implants. <laughs> On my shoulder, as a shooting recoil pad. Um, I was telling Jeff during the course of this little mini test here, I felt zero recoil on my shoulder this entire time with all these rounds, even the heaviest kicking round. Um, I felt it more here in my palm because I have a pistol grip shotgun, but this thing works great as a recoil pad. Danny, you missed out! <laughs> There's not enough duct tape on this thing for Danny. So, <laughs> duct tape breast implants. That's the name of my new hillbilly twang band. <laughs> Do you play there. the spoon? Yeah, we just play the spoons, and we're touring only uh, Kentucky and Tennessee this, this Oh, summer, good. Okay. This summer. We got a lot of viewers there. As far as we're going. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> folks, hey, uh, another idea that came to us while we're out here, let us know below in the comment section if you'd like to see this tucked behind a standard police Kevlar vest. Maybe a test for female police officers would being shot in the vest rupture this uh, pouch underneath that'd be that'd be a very useful test i don't know if anyone's ever tested something like that i don't know but we could see because when you hit a vest with any pistol round and especially rifle rounds it makes a, quite a quite an impact back face deformation they call it and we'd like to know if maybe that doesn't uh, rupture this it's a pretty tough little bag so i kind of doubt it if these 12 gauge rounds won't do anything to it but you never know you guys should definitely bring your girlfriends out shooting with you because uh this thing worked out great as a recoil pad so for science it's for science. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, you guys have a uh, very good holiday season. And if you come from a part of the world where you uh, you don't have holidays and instead you're worshiping the beet harvest or something, uh, then have a bountiful, bountiful beet harvest. <laughs> God. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll see you in the new year. <laughs>